Uh, in today's and uh, tomorrow's lecture, we will consider uh, you know one topic uh, which is very useful, very very important in the do domain of uh, statistical signal processing and adaptive signal processing. You can call it so. You can treat these lectures as kind of appendix to our main lectures that ended uh, in the last class. This particular topic, you know, I, I repeat, it's very very important in signal processing. It's called pseudo. Uh, it's called singular value decomposition singular value decomposition that is SVD of a matrix and pseudo inverse of a matrix, pseudo inverse. This is very useful in com communication control signal processing. I thought that would be a good you know, occasion to introduce the students this topic to the students. But before I get into this, then I have to derive certain properties of matrices and all that, which I will do today. In the next class, I will use this results to get into SVD theorem and uh, its extension to pseudo inverse. Okay. <coughs> we have already done uh, some uh, exercise on uh, vector space theory. So, suppose I consider a finite dimensional vector space V and a linear operator T, which maps V to say another space V prime. That is, there is V and this is V prime over some field, field is either real or complex and T maps it to some domain within V prime, we call it R. R is called the range, R is the range space. In fact, R will be a vector space, we will certainly see range space of T. That is what is R? R consists of uh, all vectors of V prime for which there is a vector in V. So, that T working on that vector V gives you this vector in R. That is R consists of V prime, where V prime is element of this and so that there exists at least one V element of V with T V V prime. Okay, loosely it is this. This is the R is a vector space because if you take say one vector V 1 prime which is say T V 1 equal to V 1 prime and again say T V 2 equal to say V 2 prime V 1 V 2 element of V and of course, V 1 prime and V 2 prime element of V prime. Then C 1 v, v 1 prime plus C 2 V 2 prime, this is nothing but T of C 1 V 1 plus C 2 V 2. But this element, this is an element of V, that means this is an element of R, because R consists of all maps of V, that is any vector R consists of all those vectors of V prime for which there is a source in V. That is, you pick up any vector v prime from R, you must find at least one vector small v in capital V, so that T working on v gives you that v prime. Okay. Now, you understand here that if v 1 prime is part of R and v 2 prime belongs to R, then any vector, any linear combination of them also belongs to R, because you find another vector as an element of v that is C 1 v 1 plus C 2 v 2 on which if, if T works gives you this. That means, this is closed and therefore, this is a vector space. So, this is called range space. Dimension of this range space 
dimension of r in fact i will call it r t this range of t we should call it r t okay dimension of r t is called the rank of the operator t similarly there is another space that is important that is called the null space of the operator t that is null space n t n t is a subspace of v n t consists of all vectors element of v so that t v maps to 0 that is t working on those vectors maps to the 0 of v prime. So, if you collect all these vectors, then it also becomes a space, subspace, and it is called null space. It is a subspace because if you take V1, V2, element of NT, then obviously C1, V1 plus C2, V2 also element of NT. Because if you apply T over this vector, T is linear, so you can apply T over V1, which is 0, T over V2, which is 0, and the summation is 0, which means C1, V1 plus C2, V2 also belongs to NT, which means NT is a subspace and it is called a null space dimension of dimension of n t is called nullity of t and we will show this is a very elementary result that for any operator t which takes a vector space v and maps it to another I mean I mean a su subset of uh, another space uh, subspace of another space v prime and if dimension of v is given to be the dimension of v is given to be say n that is v has dimension n finite dimensional v has dimension n then n is equal to the dimension of rt that is rank plus dimension of nt that is nullity that is rank plus nullity is equal to dimension of the original vector space v that is very important it is not difficult to prove we can prove it that suppose you start with the vector space v and there is this n okay let alpha i i equal to say 1 2 dot dot r be a basis of n okay that means nullity of t is r because there is dimension of r then I can take one vector say alpha r plus 1 element of v and not element of n t that is from within v, but from outside n I would say n t. Then if I append alpha r plus 1 to this set that is a linearly independent set we have seen, okay, we have seen this exercise you can call it w r plus 1 is the I mean you can say that alpha i i equal to now 1 to r plus 1 is also a linearly independent set. This we have seen already. When we started discussing vector space, we have done this kind of exercise that if you have, have this set of a linearly independent set of vectors, <coughs> consider the space spanned by them that is n t, take any vector from outside that, append that vector to this, so it becomes r plus 1 here, then again it is a linearly independent set, simply because the new guy cannot be written as a linear combination of these fellows, because the new guy is already outside n of t. And if you now consider w r plus 1 to be the space, the span of i equal to 1 to r plus 1 that is then obviously n t is contained in w r plus 1 then you take another vector alpha r plus 2 element of v not element of w r plus 1 okay that is outside w r plus 1 but in inside v okay if you append this then again append this to this set then again there is i equal to 1 dot dot now r plus 2 this also l i linearly independent you consider the span of this call it w r plus 2 and so on and so forth. So, finally, this process will stop when uh, r equal to when you when you have got uh, number of element in this set equal to the dimension of this vector space that is equal to n then you get a basis I mean this continues. So, finally, it go you get alpha i i equal to 1 dot 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 n. Okay and span of this 
span of this span of this is nothing but v. So, this way you get a basis of v, but again there is nothing unique about it because you are always picking any arbitrary alpha, alpha, alpha r plus 1, alpha r plus 2, just alpha r plus 1 should be outside n t inside v, so on and so forth, but there is no fixed choice. We have already done this exercise, so there is nothing new and us going little fast here. So, this is v. So, this way you can obtain a vector space, uh, the basis of the given vector space v, one of the basis. Now, my claim is that uh, if I now consider I already know that if I apply t on alpha 1, I get 0, t on alpha 2, I get 0, dot 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 t on alpha, I get 0 because alpha 1 to alpha 1 belongs to null space of t. But if I apply t on alpha r plus 1 or if I apply t on alpha r plus 2 or dot 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 if I apply t on alpha n, what do I get? I get definitely some vectors belonging to the range space of t and those vectors also will be linearly independent that is what we can show easily. That is if you consider t alpha i okay i from r plus 1 dot 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 up to n these vectors alpha alpha r plus 1 alpha r plus 2 alpha uh, uh, n they themselves are also linearly independent because they are part of a linearly independent set that is basis given a linearly independent set any subset of it is also linearly independent so if i don't consider from alpha 1 to alpha n but consider from alpha r plus 1 to alpha n then they are also linearly independent on them, on each of them I apply t, I get t alpha i. t alpha i, it belongs to r t. Are this t alpha is linearly independent? Answer is yes. That is, if you take this, okay, maybe I put a bracket here. If you take this and sum, so I equal to r plus 1 up to n equal to 0. Is it that the only choice, only solution for this is that c r plus 1 should be 0, c r plus 2 should be 0, dot 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 c n should be 0, that is all the coefficients should be 0 and no other choice is possible. If so, then it will be linearly independent. Okay. But uh, this means using linearity, it means t working on c i alpha i. Zero. That means belongs to null space of t because t working on this vector is giving you zero. This works on null space t. But at the same time, I know that alpha r plus one dot 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 alpha n they are not element of null space. They are outside null space. Okay. So, the only that is if you consider that means if you consider span of only these people alpha r, r plus 1 to alpha n, this span because this left hand side vector is a linear combination of alpha r plus 1 to alpha n. So, that means this, this vector, this vector belongs to here, okay. it belongs to this span. But again, by this equation, this belongs to n t. That means, this belongs to the intersection of n t and span of this. The intersection between n of t and the span of this is only at 0, because each of these vectors, I, I told you, that lies outside n of t and I consider their span, I call it, if I take their span and if I take n t, the only way, only place where they can interact, where they intersect is uh, 0. Therefore, C i, okay. That means, this summation c i alpha i is 0, i equal to r plus 1 to n, but again alpha is themselves are linearly independent. That means, c i equal to 0 for i equal to r plus 1 dot 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 n. So, that shows that these vectors t alpha i, i from r plus 1 to n. So, there are how many vectors? n minus r vectors, they are all linearly independent, though they remain in, they belong to r of t, they do not belong to v, they belong to r of t, they form a linearly independent set, fine. But what do we do with them? We will show now that this n minus r vectors, which are linearly independent and which belong to r t, they are in fact a basis, they constitute what? Basis of r of t, which means dimension of r of t is nothing but n minus r, because total number of elements is n minus r here. To show that, they 
form a basis is not very difficult that is if you take this is r of t if you take a vector say any vector this is v prime this is v if you take a vector say v prime here there must exist at least one vector v so that t on v t working on v gives you v prime that is for each v prime element of r of t there exists at least one v element of v so that t working on v gives you v prime but i already have a basis of this vector space v so i can write this vector as a linear combination of those basis vectors alpha i and i will now go from 1 to n so v prime is equal to this now using linearity i can apply t on each of the alphas but from alpha 1 to alpha n they belong to the null space so t working on them will give you zero so essentially what you get is ci t alpha i i equal to r plus 1 to n so earlier i have shown that t working on alpha i from r plus 1 to n they constitute a basis of or t they constitute they are linearly independent set and now i show that not only linearly independent any vector v prime belonging to r t can be written as a linear combination of those linearly independent vectors this proves that t alpha i i equal to r plus 1 dot 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 n is a basis of r of t that means rank of t which is the dimension of r of t this is nothing but total number of elements in this basis which is n minus r okay what was r nullity of t was r by assumption we took that to be r this implies rank t plus on nullity t is equal to n which is the dimension of the original vector space v this is a very important result this is one result we will need since I do not know your linear, linear algebra background, I have to do all this by myself, otherwise I would have easily skipped this. What is the <coughs> implication of this uh, null space? Suppose I say that if t is 1 to 1, that is it takes one vector gives you 1, say it takes v and gives you v prime and no other vector gives you v prime, that is v points to v prime and v prime points to v then the relation is 1 to 1 given v i can get v prime and given v prime i can find out who generated v prime that is v uniquely and in that case we say t is invertible okay that is given v prime i know its mother its j its uh, origin that is on whom by working on t by using t i could get the vector okay so t 1 to 1 and thus invertible if and only if nulls space that is n t consists of only one vector that is 0 implying nullity of t is 0. This is very easy to show that suppose it is given that n t consists of 0 vector and this is v, this is v prime say r of t okay you take a vector v prime here suppose it is not one to one i have a situation like this that there is at least a case like this where there are two vectors v1 v2 which under t maps to the same vector in that case i will say that t is not invertible because given v prime i don't know whether its inverse is v1 or v2 because more than one possibility exists so it is not invertible there suppose we have a situation like this that is t v 1 equal to v prime equal to t v 2. That means, if you take this and this, that means t of using linearity v 1 minus v 2 is equal to 0, which means v 1 minus v 2 belongs to an n t. That means, v 1 minus v 2 is simply 0 vector because n t consists of 0 vector by assumption, which means v 1 has to be equal to v 2. So, in that case that means, it is not possible to have to different v 1 and v 2. So, that t of v 1 gives you v, v prime also t of v 2 gives you v prime it is not possible if, if it be so then v 1 and v 2 must be same. 
So, given that null space consists of only 0 vector that is nullity 0, T definitely is 1 to 1. Okay. But on the other hand, given that on the other hand, if n t not equal to 0 vector implying nullity t greater than equal to 1, that is at least 1, that is it has at least 1 vector, I mean it has at least, uh, I mean it is not, its dimension is not 0. So, that means it has, it has many vectors, many non-zero vectors. Suppose it is so. If it is only having 0 vector, t is 1 to 1 we have seen. If it is not having only 0 vector, that is if its dimension is greater than or equal to 1, then also is it that uh, you can have uh, t 1 to 1, answer is no, you cannot have. Because for t any t v equal to say v prime, choose any u element of n t, so that u not equal to 0 and t v plus u will also give you v prime because t u is 0 because u belongs to null space. So, therefore, v and v plus u two distinct vectors give rise to after mapping give rise to a same vector in R t that is v prime which means obviously t is not invertible. So, if n t consists of 0 vector 1 to 1, if it is not it cannot be 1 to 1 that means t is 1 to 1 if and only if the null space consists of only 0 vector and nullity 0, which means rank should be same as the equal to n that is the dimension of the original vector space v, okay. then only t is invertible. Okay. This we are doing in case of uh, and using this abstract notion of linear operator and all that, but in the case of matrices, because we have to now come to matrices, you consider a matrix A belonging to say, re, say real matrices. M cross N. What does this do? A it takes say N cross M, it takes R to the power M that is real valued vectors of length M, it maps to R to the power N. How? Because you take the vector, then apply, <coughs> I mean, multiply the vector, pre multiply by the, the vector by A, you get another vector of length N. So, that is the relation and that is of course, a linear relation we all know. Okay. So, it is a linear operator working on R m give you R n. Okay. This is a special example of that case. In this case, what is R a? A is the operator, what is R a? Now, if you see a matrix, it has got a column say C 1, another column say not C 1, say call it A 1, another column say A 2 dot dot dot, another column say A, how many columns? M columns. Then if you multiply this, if you take a vector from R M, say C 1 dot 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 say C M, then this is nothing but a linear combination of these columns. Columns are of length, these columns are of length n, n cross 1 the columns belong to R n. So, that means, what is the output vector? That is after this multiple map, after this mapping or after this multiplication, you get a vector from R n. What is that vector? It is nothing but linear combination of some specific column vectors belonging to R n. What are the column vectors? Columns of this matrix. So, that means, R a is nothing but, R a is what? Is given by, each element of R is given by linear combination of the columns of A. That means, the column space, what is the column space of this matrix? Set of all possible linear combinations of the columns of this matrix that is same as the range space of this matrix, because in the range space if you pick up any vector, there is nothing but some linear combination of the columns, because when you multiply a vector by a matrix, by this matrix, you get nothing but linear combination of the columns as shown here. Okay, so, this range space consists of nothing but, it is nothing but, range space is nothing but the column space of the matrix, I repeat because any vector of range space is a linear combination of um, certain columns okay. and these columns are nothing but the column vectors of this matrix. Okay. Now, some results relevant to SVT, you consider such matrix A, 
a belong to say as before r n cam n, then a transpose a and a they have the same have the same null space. This is theorem that is null space of a transpose a is same as null space of a. This, are, this can be proved easily. Suppose you take a vector say v from null space of a that means a v equal to 0. v is of length m, 0 is a length n vector because a is n cross m. But then, <coughs> but this implies a transpose a if it works on v that also is 0 because a v is 0, is not it? That means, if v belongs to n a then v belongs to n of a transpose a. This means, n a this is very trivial is contained in this because any vector belonging to n a means a working on that is 0 and in that case a transpose a working on that also is 0. That means, that vector also belongs to the null space of a transpose a, but we have to prove the other way also that left LHS is contained in RHS and then RHS also contained in LHS this is what we have to prove and this is not difficult. <coughs> you pick up firstly LHS and RHS these two subspaces have one thing in common that is 0. At 0 at least they have something in common they are same. So, now pick up a vector x belonging to the null space of a transpose a and x is not 0 because at 0 they are common. So, no point in taking up 0 here this means a transpose a working on x is 0 that means 0. Now, if I pre multiply this by x transpose here also I get scalar 0 here, but left hand side is a x norm square in the Euclidean norm sense equal to scalar 0. This is possible only if this is the 0 vector you know norm square is 0 or norm is 0 only if the vector is a 0 vector this is 0 vector which means x belongs to null space of a. So, then we prove that this null space of a contains this also. Okay. So, that means we prove this. What is the implication of this? That we had a situation like this. this was under map A and this was this the, and under A transpose A mind you A transpose A is a matrix matrix of size what A was m n cross m. So, it will be m cross n m cross m. So, that means it takes a vector from R m and gives to the vector gives a real I mean generates a vector from R m only okay. that is while we know that range of A belongs to range of B is a subset belongs to R n range of A transpose A belongs to R m, but now space is same that is if there is a space this is n of a equivalently n of a transpose a. Okay. So, under a r m is mapped to r n as there is a null space and under a transpose a you can show that this is mapped to itself a transpose a mapped to itself. But this operator and this operator both have the same null space this. Okay. Now, that means what is rank of A? Rank of A is the dimension of this range space and rank of A transpose 
this is R of A transpose A. Okay. Rank of A means dimension of this range space. Okay. That is nothing but n minus, there is n, sorry, m minus, m is the dimension of Rm, m minus nullity of A. And what is rank of A transpose A? That is the dimension of the space which is equal to again dimension of the original space that is same as m minus nullity of this and nullity of this is same as nullity of a that means m minus nullity of a transpose a that is rank of a transpose a that means a and a transpose a they have the same rank. Similarly, by the same, I, I will not do it. You can similarly you can do A A transpose N of A A transpose is same as N of A. This can be proved implying rank of sorry, this is A transpose means rank of A A transpose is same as rank of A transpose and those who know elementary matrices they know rank of A transpose is same as rank of A and we have seen only rank of A is nothing but rank of A transpose A. This shows that A transpose A and A A transpose they have the same rank. Now, remember one thing A transpose A and A A transpose both are symmetric matrices, Hermitian real Hermitian matrices that is symmetric matrices. So, we have they can be diagonalized, they have got a set of orthogonal eigenvectors and their eigenvalues are real and non-negative. Okay, they can be 0 or positive that this we have done on plenty of occasions in this course. Remember that both this though the A A transpose is of size n cross n and this is size m cross m. So, the eigenvectors are of different size, but this also has a set of eigenvectors. A transpose A, m number of eigenvectors which are mutually orthogonal or orthonormal and corresponding eigenvalues are real and non negative. Here also you have got n number of eigenvectors which are mutually orthogonal and the corresponding eigenvectors eigenvalues are real and non negative, mind you. In fact, we will show then that rank of such symmetric matrix is also given by number of non negative eigenvalues. Okay. If I again value repeats, I will count it. If it repeats twice, I will count it as 2 and that way I will count the number of uh, non negative eigenvalues. Okay. But remember this. Okay. <coughs> now, again, I will be going to the eigenvalue eigenvector side and uh, we all know what they are, but we have to do quickly. Again, I will come back to this uh, abstract notion of operators and all that, but this time T is working on V to V and V is a finite dimensional vector space. Then small v element of v is an eigenvector of T if v firstly is not 0 and T v is some scalar times v itself. That is, you work on you use T on v, you get a vector in the same direction, just it is either amplified or attenuated by a factor lambda. Okay lambda scalar belonging to the field is called eigenvalue. Okay. <coughs> then w lambda suppose set of all that is mathematically you collect all elements of v so that T v is lambda v. The W lambda is not only a subset, we will see it is subspace, it is called the eigen subspace belonging to lambda. lambda. How? Just simply if you see, if V is a eigenvector, 2 V also is eigenvector, 3 V is eigenvector, it is scalar multiple because T on some constant times V, constant will go out, T the constant times T V, that is constant times lambda V, which is lambda into constant time V. So, that is an eigenvector. Okay. So, remember that uh, eigenvector is not unique for a, for a eigenvalue lambda, for, for each eigenvalue lambda there are many eigenvectors possible. Suppose I consider all such eigenvectors belonging to the same eigenvalue lambda and I give it a name W lambda. Okay. Then this is half space, 
because if you take v 1 v 2 element of w lambda, then c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 this also belongs to w lambda, because if you apply t on it you can apply linear use linearity c 1 into t v 1 which will give you lambda v 1 and c 2 into t v 2 which will give you lambda v 2. So, lambda you can take common again you get c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2. Okay, which that means this fellow implies c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 belongs to w lambda that means w lambda subspace is not, not just a subset is a subspace called eigen subspace corresponding to eigen value eigen value lambda. Okay. <coughs> now, we will show that if you have two distinct eigen values or several distinct eigen values lambda 1 lambda 2 dot dot say lambda r the corresponding eigen vectors are linearly independent. We will show that, but before that that is we want to show that if lambda 1 lambda 2 dot 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 lambda r are distinct eigen values then corresponding eigen vectors v 1 v 2 dot 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 v r formal L i set linearly independent set we have to prove it. Now, before we prove it some properties 1. <coughs> Suppose consider a polynomial, a polynomial P of say anything, say T, just form a polynomial, something like this A0 plus A1 T plus A2 T square dot dot dot, say anything A Q T to the power Q. Then you form the polynomial operator. P capital T that is wherever you have got small t variable coming just replace it by capital T a 2 t square t square means t followed by t that is t square working on a vector means first work t on it whatever comes again work t on it so on and so forth and a q t to the power q. Then you see one thing if this if there is a vector t v equal to lambda v then instead of t if I apply this operator polynomial operator p t on v what I get is a 0 times v. So, a 0 plus a 1 times t v, t v is lambda v. So, a 1 lambda then a 2 t square v, t square v means first t v which is lambda v again t on that means lambda square v. So, a 2 lambda square plus dot dot plus a q lambda to the power q v. I repeat again a p t you replace p t by its expression a 0 working on v means a 0 v a 1 into t v means a 1 into lambda v lambda comes here a 2 t square v means a 2 t working on t v a 2 t t v t v is lambda v take lambda out t v again lambda v. So, you get lambda square. So, a 2 lambda square on v dot dot dot. So, you get this. So, this is nothing but same polynomial which we started with, but instead of t we have got lambda. So, p lambda v. So, if you got a polynomial if you got to operate in a polynomial form that works on an eigen vector resulting thing is the eigen vector multiplied by the scalar where you in place of the operator you replace the eigen value. This is one property. Another property is another thing is that we are given we are given lambda 1 not equal to lambda 2 not equal to dot 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 not equal to lambda r corresponding eigen values are eigen vectors are v 1 v 2 dot 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 v r we have seen it. Okay. So, I have to prove that if c i v i 
equal to 0, we have to show that each coefficient is 0 that is v 1 to v r there is a linearly independent set that is the objective of this uh, theorem. I mean there, there is a uh, uh, there is an objective to prove actually that show that the Eigen vectors corresponding to distinct Eigen values they are linearly independent. So, I pick up those Eigen vectors here v 1 v 2 up to r I equal to 1 to r form a linear combination equated to 0. I have to show that this is possible only if c 1 equal to c 2 equal to dot dot equal to c r equal to 0 and no other solution exists then that will show that this is linearly independent. How to show that? Okay. So, I pick up from i equal to 1 to r a particular case say m. Say take m less than equal to r greater than equal to i. I will show that c m equal to 0, c m is equal to 0 and then I, you can pick up m in to be anything from i to i plus 1 to i plus 2 to r. So, that will show that each coefficient is 0 because m is general. general. Okay. Suppose I form a polynomial p m t as this here I take lambda m minus lambda 1, lambda m, these are all scalar numbers, lambda 2 dot dot dot, lambda m, I go up to lambda m minus 1 and then I skip lambda, go for this dot dot dot, lambda m minus lambda r and here again t minus lambda 1, t minus lambda 2 dot 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 t minus lambda m minus 1 and then t minus just follow the denominator m plus 1 dot 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 t minus lambda r. What is the property of this you know if you take if you replace t by lambda m what do you get? Lambda m minus lambda 1 lambda m minus lambda 1 cancels lambda m minus lambda 2 lambda m minus lambda 2 cancels all the terms cancel you get 1. At if you take any other lambda j equal to 0 for j not equal to m and in general j equal to 1 to r, but not equal to m then it is 0. So, I can always construct a polynomial like this I picked up a particular index m I am looking at mth Eigen value lambda m the corresponding coefficient here is c m the Eigen vector is v m I am focusing on that keeping that in mind I construct a particular polynomial. Now, if on this equation if I apply p m t on that right hand side of course, is 0 because this polynomial operator working on 0 vector will give you 0 vector because of linearity and this is a polynomial operator this is polyno I mean whether you have the operator as t or is a linear combination as in a poly polynomial form linearity remains. So, p m t can be applied individually on v i's. Okay. That means, working on v i okay, equal to 0, but this means I have already proved one property this polynomial working on v i means resulting thing is the vector itself multiplied by a scalar value. What is the scalar value? Instead of t in place of t put the corresponding Eigen value. So, that means left hand side is c i p m corresponding lambda i times v i and this is equal to 0. Okay. But p m lambda you have seen only when i equal to m this is 1 otherwise it is 0. That means c m v m is equal to 0. So, one possibility is either v m equal to 0 or c m is 0, but v m is an Eigen vector by definition v m cannot be 0 that means c m is 0 and m you take as i or i plus 1 dot 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 up to r. So, each coefficient is 0 which proves that Eigen vectors belonging to different uh, distinct Eigen values they are linearly independent. That means, if t takes from v to v okay, and you have got you have got this distinct Eigen values you know lambda 1 dot 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 lambda say r you form the corresponding Eigen subspaces
eigen vectors belonging to w lambda 1 if you take a, you, you can form a you can find a basis of this subspace you can find a basis of w lambda 2 you can find a basis of w lambda so and so and since these spaces i mean vector from here w lambda 1 vectors from w lambda 2 they are all linearly independent that means you can form a direct sum of them okay if this direct sum happens to be same as v then then if this then we say t diagonalizable this is because this is because suppose t is diagonalizable okay this is because suppose w lambda 1 you have got a basis alpha 1 1 to say alpha 1 or w lambda 2. What I want to say is this, you can form a basis, if this is so, you can form a basis of v by taking one basis of w lambda 1, another basis of w lambda 2 dot dot dot, a basis of w lambda just appending them. Okay. That will form a linearly independent set because it is a direct sum because I told you eigenvectors belonging to distinct eigenvalues, they are linearly independent. You are picking a basis already from w lambda 1, already from w lambda 2, you are just appending the basis. So, you get a basis for v. So, if on any vector in that basis you apply t, each vector is an eigenvector. So, you get nothing but that vector itself multiplied by the corresponding eigenvalue. That means, this kind of operation. So, that means, if you have I mean if you have if you take any vector v small v belonging to capital V write it as a linear combination of this basis capital T works on that. So, what you have to do simply capital T work on each individual basis vector and the corresponding since each individual basis vector is an eigen vector of some, some eigen value or other you will get nothing but that eigen vector coming back multiplied by the corresponding eigen value. Okay. Now, this when I comes to matrices then this uh, will be further clear. Okay. <coughs> But before I go to matrices, just one more thing I wanted to show that suppose T takes V to V, okay, and you have got lambda 1, you have got suppose a 0, 0 eigen value and then lambda 1, lambda 2, dot 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 say lambda r. Okay. So, that means and v is given to be that is also t is given to be diagonalizable that is v is nothing but w 0 direct sum w lambda 1 direct sum w lambda 2 direct sum dot 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 direct sum w lambda r this is given to you. Okay. In that case If you take any vector, if you take any vector uh, small v element of v, t working on v, that will be what? That will be given by a linear combination of. I mean, that will be for that first we have to find out the basis of w zero. Suppose this eigen vector value, this w zero, this has got a basis. basis say say alpha 0 1 alpha 0 2 dot 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 say alpha 0 total number is something maybe say m 0 w 1 has a basis alpha 1 1 alpha 2 1 dot 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 say alpha 1 m 1, then w lambda r has a basis alpha r 1, alpha r 2 dot 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 say alpha r m r. Okay. Obviously, you have got how many elements here m 0, you have got m 1, you have got m r. So, m 0 plus m 1 plus dot dot plus m r should be equal to the dimension of v, because if you uh, append the basis all these basis 
they form a basis for V that you have seen because the operator is diagonal eligible because you have got this and, and therefore, you have got this direction decomposition of V in terms of this. But there is a difference between the Eigen subspace W0 and the other ones. Eigen subspace W0 corresponds to the Eigen value 0, other ones corresponds to distinct but non zero Eigen values. Now, if you pick up any V element of V, you can write V as a linear combination in terms of these basis vectors. Okay. C i j alpha j i i equal to i equal to 1 2 m j and then j equal to 0 to r for j equal to 0 we have got this once alpha 0 1 alpha 0 2 dot 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 alpha 0 up to m 0 and likewise ok it is nothing it is just notation and jaggedary but actually I am nothing but doing nothing but I am linearly combining them if I apply t over v then t can be applied directly on these vectors. Remember for j equal to 0, you have got alpha 0 1, alpha 0 2 dot 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 alpha 0 m 0, t working on each of them will give rise to the same vector, but multiplied by 0 Eigen value. So, they give rise to 0. So, I do not have to consider them. Okay, that means, I have to consider from here to here. Okay, I have to consider from here to here. That means, T v is nothing but from j equal to 1 I have to start to r and then i equal to 1 to m j c i j alpha j i times because T working on times the corresponding Eigen value. Eigen value will be just a minute. lambda i j the two indices lambda i j okay, alpha j i. So, this actually shows that range space of t any vector belonging to the <coughs> range space. Okay. First any vector belonging to the range space of t there is nothing but of this form t v is nothing but a linear combination of the uh, combination of whom these eigenvectors correspond to the non-zero eigenvalues, and these eigenvectors form a linearly independent set because, I mean, within W1 itself, it was a forming a basis means they are linearly independent. Within W2 itself, other one was forming a basis of W2, it was linearly independent, so on and so forth. And when I appended them, it's still linearly independent because they correspond to, I mean, eigenvectors correspond to different eigenspaces. They are linearly independent. That means, I got a set of linearly independent vectors, one set here, one set, I mean it consists of eigen, I mean these, these dot dot dot, these all appended. I got a set of linearly independent vectors, which are eigen vectors corresponding to the non-zero eigen value. So, that any vector of the range space is a linear combination of them. That means, range space is actually nothing but, range space is nothing but the span of all the span of the what actually range space is nothing but this part. Okay, range space is nothing but this part because any vector belonging to the range space is a linear combination of these vectors. That is the basis vectors of W lambda 1, basis vectors of W lambda 2, dot dot dot, basis vectors of W lambda r. It is a linear combination of them okay. and they are already linearly independent. So, this part corresponds to range of t, r of t and this part corresponds to null space of t because any vector from there if you pick up. Okay if you apply t over that you get 0. Okay.
All right. So, I stop here. In the next class, I will use these results and get into SVD. Thank you very much.